course, because everybody's different, but I'd say a good vast majority of gamers are not very expressive, not very emotional, aren't very uh, uh, confessive, if that's the word, if you will, uh, where we're not so people who are, you know, really pouring our hearts out and being totally honest about how we feel and what we're going through. And so being uh, a part of a ministry called the God Squad, being a Christian and, and, and giving the gospel of Jesus and, uh, and, and this message of hope to the gaming community, uh, I would hope that uh, behind your computer screen where it's a little more anonymous and a little more private, you and I, uh, whether you're watching this pre-recorded or live right now, that you and I could be a little honest with each other. And uh, let me tell you something, this devotional today is so key and it's so on point and true uh, because uh, when I examined my life uh, years ago when I had not given my life over and surrendered it uh, to Jesus Christ and, and by surrendered what I mean by that is is confessing with my mouth that Jesus Christ truly is the Lord, that he truly is who he said he was, uh, that he died on the cross uh, and that he resurrected three days later, conquering the sins of the world. So not only did he die for the sins of the world, but he conquered them by coming back from the dead, showing that not only did he bear them, but he, he, he can do all things, that he can come back to life, that he has absorbed our sin and destroyed our sin by actually defying death and the natural law of birth and death. And so also believing that in my heart. So not only confessing it with my mouth, but believing it in my heart. And another thing, that I would turn from my old ways, turn from my sin, repent, ask God for forgiveness in my life for the things that I've done uh, to displease him. And so each of us are not, per all of us are not perfect. And each of us have done something along the lines to break one of God's laws, to violate one of his statutes and laws and commands. And uh, that's obviously natural. We're all imperfect. I'm imperfect. The greatest pastor you see on TV is imperfect. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. And But, but the fact is, is that God is in the business of changing lives. Not that we're perfect, but that we strive to be perfect like he is. And if God is supernatural and all-powerful, and those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ, that he's living inside the Christian, then daily he must be progressively working in you to make yourself look exactly like him. And if he's perfect and holy and righteous and awesome in every way, then uh, this work that's happening inside of us uh, should there should be some form of evidence in our everyday life now the world is cha chaotic but in the Christian's life there should be a sense of of peace when there seems to be no peace there should be a sense of confidence when everyone is discouraged there should be a sense of a uh, clarity and clear mind and peace and and just a coolness uh, of, of a Christian uh, when the world is going nuts and nobody knows where their help is going to come from. As a matter of the fact, as a Christian, we understand where our help comes from. And uh, the government is great and medicine and science and doctors is awesome and it's all fair and good. And God has all put it in its place and for its reason. Uh, but uh, God is in the business of truly changing lives and making situations different and better. So I don't put my trust in the earthly, fleshly, temporary things down here on earth that really can't do very much for me at all because they always draw a line uh, that eventually if I go too far, they can't cross. Uh, but Christ has again and again and again shown me that he's willing and that he's able to cross any lines that science draws, any lines that medicine draws, any lines that the government draws, any lines that this world can draw. Uh, and I think he really showed that by bearing my sin and your sin on himself, going to that cross and facing brutal suffering, pain, and death just so I and yourself could enter into heaven. And, and here's the thing. Uh, this is not our permanent homes. And, and if this world is consumed with sin and full of all kinds of evil, and if Satan, our enemy and your enemy... Uh, exists on this earth and is going up and down earth looking for people to devour and to kill and to torture and destroy with whatever you know devices he might have, uh, then we don't really want to build our treasures and all of our hope and confidence uh, 
on only the things that are down here on earth. And let me tell you something, Christ is that confidence, is that boldness of encouragement that you could have to know that when this life ends and we all will be faced with that destiny of, you know, being buried six feet under because nobody lasts on earth forever and, and we're standing before Christ go, undergoing judgment over everything that we've ever done in life, only one thing will matter. It's not, many, it's not how many cars you had. It's not the last college degree you earned. It's not how good your mommy and daddy were and how they went to church all the time. But it only matters how you kept a relationship with God in the free will that God gave to you. That's right. God gave you free will to choose or reject him because God will not force anyone to be in a relationship with him, nor will he force anyone to lower their pride and say, you know what, I need God in my life. He wants that to be a willing thing. He's not pushy. He's not overbearing. He's not a hypocrite or a phony. But in the midst of the tragedy that we see around us just by turning on the television and, ex and even looking into our own lives at times, are you sick of the way things have been going? Aren't you sick of how things are going on around the world? Don't you want to have the confidence that Jesus Christ is preparing a place for you in heaven where there is no more torturing, where there is no more religion, where there is no more sickness, where there is no more pain and struggle and separation and sweat and all kinds of evil, where the tempter tempts no more, where the evil exists no longer, where cancer is no longer evident and present. That is the place I want to go, and that is the place that Jesus prepares for the Christian alone. And whether he comes back again, because the Bible says that Christ is going to return again to take Christians home to heaven with him, because this is not our permanent home. This is not where we live forever. Obviously, we all die, right? Or if we should die before that time and stand face to face with him, we will all undergo judgment. But did you accept the forgiveness and grace of God through the shedding and breaking of the body of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection? Did you put faith in that? Did you turn from your sins and, 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 and live with this new life that God only gives? This new joy, this new strength, this new peace, this new relationship that gives life literally. That you would lay down your life here on earth, give it up for the sake of the, of the will of God, and that you might gain life eternally. Which, by the way, might I add, when I weigh out on the scale, eternal life is I mean, obviously, so much more important and better than what I can achieve and do and have down here on earth. And let me tell you something. For those who have been uh, twisted in the tornado of lies, of that hell is a place where sinners will go to party and do the things that God has kept them from doing then and on earth, that is nothing but a fabrication and a lie straight from the pit of hell. Because hell is not a place where anyone will be celebrating We'll be smiling, we'll be rejoicing, but it's a place that's totally separated from God who created you and who created you with a purpose to live with him eternally in heaven. If heaven is everything good and perfect and no pain and no sorrow, then hell is actually the... If heaven's like that, then hell is the opposite. And let me tell you something. Hell is a place where the torture never ends, where the worm does not die, where death will be craved and death will not find you. Because it's eternal and it's forever. And I'm not here to scare anyone, but I'm here to give you the truth. I'm here to give you the gospel that God loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting to everlasting life. Like I said, Jesus Christ is in the business of changing lives. He's changed my life. I'm not who I was years ago, not based on what I have done, but based on what he has done. And God who lives on the inside of me is changing me every day till this day. And he's creating this light in me every day and doing great and amazing things in me, supernatural things that I cannot do based on my own strength, that I cannot accomplish based on my own knowledge. He is far beyond my wisdom, far beyond my knowledge, far beyond anything that I could ever do and be on my own. And God does that, and he's capable of doing that not only in my life, but your life too. So if you're in here today, and you want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, don't pass the moment up. Don't pass this opportunity up. Whether you need to message me because you're watching, you whisper me because you're watching this pre-recorded, we can have a Skype call, no problem. 
or if you're in here now and you need some kind of prayer request, something's going on in life, you need God to pull through, or if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior to really rest assured and seal the deal that you will be in heaven if tomorrow you should not wake up, don't pass this opportunity up and, 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 and don't give up making a mark on your eternity. So is there anyone in here today who would like to whisper or type anything at all from prayer request to I want Jesus Christ to be my personal Lord and Savior to whatever, you can type it in the channel right now and I'll consider that and I will pray over you and I will forward you an opportunity in accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But other than that, if there be nothing, I will pray and I will exit out of here and then we will all go to an online gamer church that is found in no other place but God Squad Church, which happens every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, uh, it's a church service with giveaways, uh, live worship music, uh, a, a great sermon that somebody brings forth. And it's just an overall great time. And I'd love, 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 love to have uh, you guys be there along with me today. So, again... The opportunities there. Do you need prayer for something or would you like to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and make the greatest decision of your whole eternal life? Is there anyone or anything?